Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Do you remember the good old days of the Cold War? The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics in the East versus the capitalist free world of the West. They were simpler days, identity politics hadn't been invented yet, and all anyone had to worry about on a daily basis was, am I going to die in a nuclear fireball today with only four minutes of notice? Good times indeed. Do you remember the good old days of the Vostok catalogue when you had a similar binary choice to make? You could pick the Komandierski, a field watch that they've been making since the 1950s with a manual winding mechanical movement and 30 metres of water resistance, or you could plump for the Amphibia, their 200 metre dive watch they've been making since the 1960s with an automatic movement. What happened Vostok? Why did you decide to muddy the waters between those two clearly defined lines of watches? The last two Vostoks that I have reviewed on the channel have both been labelled as Commandierskis, but they've both been far more like amphibias in that they've been automatic and they've had 200 metres of water resistance. Don't get me wrong, they're still great watches, but I'm not quite sure why they decided to confuse the lines. Let's flip the camera and have a look at this yellow peril. So what is it, how much is it, and where can you get one if you want to get one? Well, this is the Vostok Komandierski 650859. I would recommend picking it up from Meronom, which is the official factory shop in Chistopol in Russia. They seem to be out of stock of this model at the moment. Plenty on eBay though, same price, less than 80 US dollars. Now you can get this yellow one with a date indicator at the three o'clock, comes with a black bezel insert. You can also get these in green, you can get them in red, you can get them in blue. Both both with date and no date, I will talk about the colours a little later on. Where did I get mine and how much did I pay for it? Well, I didn't pay a cent. This one is on loan to me from Adam over in Melbourne, a long-time supporter of the channel. He is Blue Moose Racing at Instagram. I recommend you give him a follow. I'll leave links to Meronom, to eBay and to Adam's Instagram account in the description of the video. Do you know what? Apart from the rather vibrant yellow hue, this is one of the most subdued Vostoks that I have reviewed on the channel to date, although that isn't saying an awful lot, is it? Case shape is relatively normal and there's only a minimum of Cyrillic text on the dial and no pictures of paratroopers, tanks, submarines or golden eagles on there. 41 millimeters in diameter, 15 mil thick, 49 lug to lug. So a good size, but still very wearable. 20 mil lug width helps to bring it back down. And on the supplied Vostok branded bracelet, which I'll talk about in just a second, sized up for me, this one weighs in at 135 grams. Stainless steel. Now, unlike some of the amphibias, this is case is made of stainless steel, as is the crown. Some of the amphibias are made of chromed brass. Stainless steel bezel, though the bezel, it should be noted as always, is bi-directional and friction bezel. So it doesn't click as you'd expect it to, meaning its uses are probably limited. Now that bezel insert is an acrylic bezel insert to match the piece of lovely vintage style acrylic covering the dial. One of my favorite features of all of these Vostoks is that little bit of acrylic. It will scuff and scratch more easily than mineral crystal, but unlike mineral crystal, which you find on watches at around this price point, a little bit of poly wash and you can buff out any scratches. So the bracelet straight cut end links, as you can see. Now this is the best bracelet that I've seen on a Vostok, but once again, that isn't really saying an awful lot. It doesn't look awful, reasonable finishing to the brushing on the outer edges and a high polished center, but the clasp, Vostok branded there, as you can see, three hole micro adjust, but it is cheap, nasty. The whole thing sounds pretty awful. And those links, even though they look like solid links, they're not, they're actually rolled links. Though in typical Russian style E, you really have to look hard to find out that they are rolled. So a little bit sneaky there, you can see it. They've done a reasonable job. It's not uncomfortable, but it's flimsy, it's rattly. If you do buy one of these or anything else from Meronom, I highly recommend optioning on the matching mesh strap in either 18, 20 or 22. For 12 bucks, they are fantastic and really transform the watch. Or you could always, put it on a rubber strap. Adam is a smart man. He had already ditched the bracelet. He had put this one on a Barton. You can see there, Barton, 20 millimeter rubber strap, soft, comfortable, and with a nice piece of brushed hardware matching the brush finish on the case. 
Now the dial is just printed and I think it looks good, nice and sharp, black on yellow. If it looks a little bit wonky from certain angles, that's more to do with the domed acrylic crystal than any dodgy Russian printing. So a big triangle at 12 o'clock, batons at 3, 6 and 9 because this is the no-date variant and Arabic's everywhere else. Komandirsky in black underneath the triangle at 12 and I'm guessing that's the insignia of a Komandirsky, the star and the two stripes on a lapel. 31 jewel because it's 31 jewel movement and made in Russia, I'm guessing around the edge. And some loom, there's loom on the hands and there is some loom on little droplets around the edge of the dial. The hands, the loom is actually okay on the hands, not really okay on the dial. But for a 200 meter automatic dive watch at less than $80, I don't think that loom is too awful. But it's undoubtedly more legible by day than by night. I love the fact that they've gone for a black handset here. It really pops against the yellow of the dial and a tiny little bit of color, the paddle second hand in red, picking out, if not quite matching, the insignia that sits just to the right of the pinion. So screw down crown, 200 meters of water resistance, and it's the same two piece screw on case back as can be found on the Vostok Amphibia. Like I said, this one shares far more in common with an Amphibia than with one of the traditional Komandierski classics. Really, these things are like tractors. They are rustic, but robust. I have said it before, if you're cutting your teeth in modding and you want to tinker around with watches, you want to regulate them yourself, you'll probably need to. I'll pop this one on the time grapher in a minute or two. These are great. You can take the case backs on and off as many times as you want and you will never shear the rubber seals because of this ingenious design. And behind that two-piece case back lies the tractor's engine. It is a Vostok in-house 2415.01 caliber, but 01 because this is the no-date version as discussed. 31 joule, you can manually wind these, but you cannot hack them. There's a kind of back hacking trick you can do, but technically they don't hack. When fully charged, bi-directional winding, they have a maximum runtime of around 31 hours and a stated accuracy of, are you ready for this, minus 22 plus 60 seconds per day. They are a little bit agricultural, but they're fairly easy to adjust, especially if you have a time grapher. Talking of which, let's get this one on. Hey, do you know what? That's not too bad. Plus 10 seconds per day, very healthy amplitude, zero beat error. If I got one out of the box from Chista Paul and it was running at plus 10, I would be pretty pleased with that. I probably wouldn't bother trying to get this one any sharper. Now, 19,800 vibrations per hour, so a slightly slow beat rate. That is one of the reasons why Vostok quote a 10 year service interval on these movements. I don't know any other company apart from Rolex that suggests a 10 year service interval on their movements. On wrist it sits nice and comfortably, though I suspect a lot of the credit for that belongs to this lovely silicone strap. Not a bad lug to lug at 49 given the diameter dimension and I'm always happy when companies go with a smaller rather than a larger size of lug width. You can see there if I show you the side profile, 15 mil thick sounds like a lot but it doesn't feel like a lot on wrist. It carries that thickness quite well because of the acrylic on top and because of that two piece case back and there is just enough downturn on those lugs that it fits my average size seven inch wrist very nicely. Overhead shot, great legibility. I'm loving the black numerals, the black hands, the black bezel markers all against that yellow dial. Not sure if it would be as legible in red, green or blue to be honest, but I'm quite enjoying the yellow today. And if you take this watch outside in natural light, you get to enjoy that lovely distortion from the edges of the viewing angle, thanks to the acrylic crystal. Really a lovely feature of these watches. You're paying a ton of money for acrylic crystal in kind of retro dive watches further up the food chain these days. You can get it for less than 80 bucks out of a Vostok. So what are Vostok doing then? Well, as far as I can tell, they've launched a range of colorful amphibias, but they've labeled them as Komandierskis. I'm not quite sure why they did that. Maybe I just haven't had enough vodka yet to see the logic. I think it's a great watch regardless though. I do appreciate the colors. I appreciate the choice of date or no date as well. I just don't understand why they didn't just call them amphibias. I think also what they're doing is they're filling in a niche for people who would previously have bought a Vostok amphibia and modded it by changing the dial, changing the hand, changing 
changing the bezel insert and so on. This way you get the look and feel of a modded Vostok Amphibia, but for the standard price of an Amphibia, and you don't have to tinker around with them yourself. Plus they're not quite as polarizing as the regular Commandeer skis or even the regular Amphibias are. It's a little bit more demure, and I never thought I'd use that word in connection with a Vostok. They're still gonna be a bit of a polarizer, I get it. Not everybody likes these things, but I'm a big fan, and it's only a matter of time before I pick up my next one. So there you have it. I guess it doesn't really matter what name Vostok decide to slap on the dial. You either love these things or you hate these things regardless. I love them. This is a cracker. So was the GMT that I reviewed earlier on this year. And I'm definitely going to be picking up one of those 24 hour dial versions soon enough. That's Vidanya comrades. I'll see you in a future video.